Hello and welcome to CMC Markets and this quick preview of the week beginning 17th of July. And the main focus of my attention this week is going to be on the latest UK inflation data in light of the wages data that we saw earlier this month, which came in at 2%, a slight increase from the 1.7% that we saw in April, and also be looking at UK retail sales for June as well, in light of the disappointing number that we saw in May. And certainly I think the health of the UK consumer has been a concern in the second quarter of this year, uh, particularly since average earnings have fallen significantly below the level of inflation. So be looking at UK inflation this week and UK retail sales in the context of a continuing debate, I think, on whether or not it would be wise to reverse the rate cut that we saw the Bank of England implement in August of last year. And that also ties into a wider debate about central bank policy more globally in light of the rate hike that we saw from the Bank of Canada, um, which followed on from the rate hike, the third rate hike, that we've seen from the US Federal Reserve in the last seven months, which we saw them implement in June. So the big question, I think, is are central banks starting to consider quite strongly the prospect that we could well see a slightly tighter monetary policy going forward? Certainly, bond markets do appear to be reflecting that so-called new normal. And we're sort of seeing that in this chart that I've got here in front of me, this Bloomberg chart here. In the past two or three weeks, we've seen bond yields, not only in UK gilts, but also on German bonds, jump quite substantially on the basis that there is a perception now that the central banks more globally are looking less about more stimulus and looking at more about pairing back that stimulus. Certainly comments made by ECB President Mario Draghi at the end of June would appear to suggest that that is the discussion that is going on behind the walls of the Governing Council at the ECB. And we could, we could well get some colour on that on Thursday when the ECB meets for its latest uh, policy meeting. I think it's unlikely that we'll see any new indicators as to whether or not the ECB will look to taper its 60 billion euro a month stimulus program, but I certainly think there is some speculation that they could outline a plan as soon as the September meeting and even before that at the Jackson Hole Annual Symposium, which takes place at the end of August. So in the context of the way where Euro has gone, um, that could be a very, very interesting discussion over the course of the next few weeks. Certainly it's been reflected in the performance of Euro dollar, and I think the performance of the Euro has also been helped by the fact that Janet Yellen, chairwoman of the Fed, was slightly more dovish than was expected by um, investors in comments to US policymakers at a Humphrey Hawkins testimony. Her comments about inflation and her comments about a much lower neutral level of interest rates would appear to suggest that potentially the Federal Reserve could have done the bulk of the heavy lifting when it comes to interest rate hikes, and ultimately their focus now is more on balance sheet reduction. It's certainly, I think, something that she's probably likely to get a much better consensus for on the FOMC than the possibility of future rate rises. And I certainly think that's been reflected in um, Fed, uh, Fed fund projections with respect to the possibility of a rate rise this year. It's a less than a 50% probability that we'll see one more rate rise before the end of this year. In fact, it's more likely that the Bank of England could well reverse the August rate cut that we saw last year by the end of this year, though given some of the recent data, that still I think remains very much a 50-50 bet. But certainly I think given recent comments by Andrew Haldane, uh, the Bank of England's chief economist, there does appear to be slightly more of a discussion about the prospect of at least reversing the rate hike, the rate cut that we saw last year, even if it doesn't mean um, a complete reversal of um, the current easy monetary policy. In fact, comments by Ian McCafferty would appear to suggest that he's in favour of potentially tapering back quantitative easing as well. So we may not be having a discussion about a rate hike. We could actually be having a discussion as we head in towards the end of this year where the Bank of England actually starts thinking about withdrawing its current stimulus package. 
So that also ties into the rebound that we've seen in UK gilt yields. So what does this mean for currencies more broadly in terms of what to expect? Well, I think a lot will depend on this week's inflation data. Um, CPI, UK CPI is currently running at 2.9%. Um, and I think there is a good chance that that could well soften over the course of the next few months. Certainly, I think in the context of what we've been seeing with respect to oil prices is helping, I think, temper inflation expectations, even if the weakness of the pound isn't helping. But what we have seen over the course of the past few days is we appear to have found a little bit of a base around about 127 and a half, despite that brief um, drop below it in the middle of June. We were able to reverse it quite quickly, but we're still running into a barrier around about 130.40. That, you think, for me, is the big level on the cable at the moment. If we can get through 130.40, then we could go for a little bit of a run to the upside. But I think a lot of that will also depend on how weak or otherwise the dollar is over the course of the next few trading sessions. I think what's more important in the context of the euro dollar is um, where the euro dollar goes to next. And at the moment, we do appear to be finding a decent area of support above this 113 area, which I highlighted as a previous resistance um, in the early part of and, and in the middle of June. Now that we're above that, we've, we do appear to be finding a little bit of support above there. But what is particularly interesting, I think, with respect to the euro, is that on some of the crosses, we do appear to be showing some signs of a little bit of um, toppiness, if you like. If we look at Euro Yen, for example, we can see on the daily chart here potential potential bearish reversal there on Euro Yen, which could suggest that maybe we could go for a little bit of a trip to the downside towards 125.80 and these series of highs, previous highs through here, through May. We haven't as yet been back towards that. Certainly, this does appear to suggest that there is a little bit of selling interest up around the 130 area. But we've also seen a similar sort of a daily reversal on Euro Sterling as well over the course of the past couple of days. So certainly be keeping an eye on Euro Sterling and the Euro Yen for further evidence as to whether or not we're going to see um, potential Sterling strength over the course of the next few trading sessions. We're going to wrap this up with basically talking about UK retail sales. Um, there has been some concern that the um, UK consumer has been pulling back um, over the course of the previous month, over the course of the previous month, simply because of the squeeze on average incomes. Certainly the May retail sales numbers that we saw were very disappointing. They declined 1.2%, but that has to be put in the context of a 2.3% rise that we saw in April. As far as the British Retail Consortium has been concerned, their June retail sales numbers were quite encouraging at plus 1.2%. So Will the June ONS retail sales numbers be as encouraging? The forecast is for them to come in around about 0.4%, um, but that could go either way, given how wages and inflation is, is unfolding at the moment. But um, that's really it for this week. As I say, keep an eye out for the ECB, the Bank of Japan, and the UK data, UK inflation data, and UK retail sales data. That's it. For this week, thanks very much for listening. This is Michael Hewson talking to you from CMC Markets.